now. Sit wherever you like. There you go. Just uh, one quick thing. This is going to be recorded, so yes. just uh, keep your cell phones on silent. Turn the cars. And when we say live studio audience, audience, yeah. yay! That's all I ask. Yeah, right now I think. Like you know. I've never had an audience member curse, but like maybe this is the day where. I'll forget to turn this on. Oh my god! Oh it's my always, god! It's going to happen one day. One day it's going to happen, but not today. Not yet. Not today. All right. Not so, today. Mario, Not today. all you have to do is when you talk, speak this way, because the microphone is here. It's a good mic. I'm recording that. It can pick it up, and then we're going to be on, this will be on right. the YouTube page, behind the scenes mm -hmm. recording. All right. So, Great. Here we go. Sorry we had such a small audience today. Sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes it's a lot. Yeah, I'm really glad I came, because... Uh, yeah, I'm glad I came. It's I just, brought to you in part. Be I haven't been for you guys. here in uh, a couple of years. Do yeah. not necessarily like reflect those of the Yeah, no, I do. I go to Comic Con. I go to Comic Con and, and, now and stuff. It came from the radio. Good. Welcome once again to It Came From The Radio, the official show of the Big Apple Con. This is your host, Mark Torres, speaking. I am here in front of a live studio audience. Whoa! Yeah! 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 At the East Middle Public Library for our 81st live show. And I am here with uh, my co-host, Elman and Jenny Feldman. Hey, hey, how are you doing? And we're going to be talking to with and about our special guest, who's awesome, because he's right here. That makes our life so much easier. It's a Brazilian comic artist. Should I just call you comic artist or Brazilian comic artist? Right. Like both, female comedian. I'm both. I don't know. <laughs> so you're just yeah. a comic artist. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome yeah. comic artist, Mario Cal. Yeah. So as I mentioned, we're going to talk to Mario in just a few minutes, but before we do any of that, we have to take it away with the news. The news is brought to you in part by the fine folks of the Big Apple Con, which we are the official radio show of, celebrating over 26 years of comic bookness and pop culture stuff. For more information, go to www.bigapplecc.com. Their next convention is scheduled for November the 23rd, and tickets are on sale now. So you can go buy tickets right now, and then you got to wait like five months to go to the convention. Also, the show is brought to you in part by the fine folks of sci-fi.radio. That's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. I want to give a shout out for our Patreons, of which there are Danny Grillo, award winning director Jared Burrell, Kyle Horn, Millie Cortez, Newsday Famous Resident Media, Unji Khan, Shadra Radar, Jasmine Ray, Rosa, and The Hurricane. I want to have your own little shout out, go to our website, www.itcamefromradio.com. A little button on there takes you right to our Patreon page. Also, on the It Came From Radio website is my con book. Designated, a book that took 30 years to make, recently performed at a radio play at New York Comic Con. It tells a tale about two warring alien races fighting over a new discovered power source to war find its way to planet Earth, and as a result, some humans gain abilities. As uh, normally, we start with the sad news, but we don't have any sad news for this week, so... Uh, you guys are uh, lucky. <laughs> so we just go to the regular news. Thank God. From the Smurfs A Lot Department. None other than IMPS, I -M -P -S, which stands for the International Merchandising Promotions and Services, has announced that they are renewing and unifying all the characters of the Smurf brand under the renamed Peyo Company, which was named after the creator of the characters, uh, starting with new shows of Johanna Peewee and Benny Breakerup, uh, while continuing the Smurf series on Nickelodeon, with season four in production as of right now, and a new Smurf movie, which is coming out in 2025. Uh, Peo's daughter, who is the CEO, says, <clears throat> it has been an honor to be able to build such success out of the blue characters my father created, and now I hope we will do the same for some of his other creations, Johanna Kiwi and Benny Brickerton. Uh, Peo Company is currently looking for talents to make these exciting projects happen. Of note, Johan and Kiwi first came, uh, came out first, and then the Smurfs were introduced in a story called Smurfs and the Magic Flute in 1958, which was turned into a movie of the same name in 1976. Now, um, I was a fan of the Smurfs, those little blue guys, which are three apples tall. Um, they had a hugely popular Hanna-Barbera cartoon in the 80s, and I guess it led all the way to the 90s, one of the biggest cartoons of the time. And I remember watching um, 
the, the Johan and Pee Wee were characters in the Smurfs cartoon, and I remember seeing the Smurfs and the Magic Flute, but the Smurfs and the Magic Flute had different voices, and they didn't have all their personality. So in the cartoon, uh, the Smurfs, sometimes their hats represented their, their personalities, like uh, the chef had a chef hat, and uh, the lazy had a little hat that went down, and then they went on and on, they added new characters every year. And I tapped out, which is funny, because they had, there was a rule that Smurfs were only guys. They were only guys, and they had 100 Smurfs, and then they had one female Smurf, which was the evil- The breeder? Uh, um, the breeder Smurf? No, not the breeder Smurf. Well, was, how are they gonna get more Smurfs? Was, they need a lady. The, the stork used to bring the, the Smurfs. Sure. And they had, they was a stork in the cartoon. Sure. Yeah, okay. They had a baby Smurf, that's how they came, and baby Smurf had magical powers. Uh -huh. But the evil wizard who was trying to get them to either eat them or turn them into gold, depending on which version yeah. of the story you want, uh -huh. um, they, they, he created a female, Smurf, like an evil tempter Smurf, and then the power of love turned into the good Smurf, which was Smurfette. And then later on, they added a second female, which was Sasset, and then after that, they decided to add Nanny Smurf, and that was when I stopped, because that just ruined the whole, what? because it ruined the whole story of Smurfs. They're like, there's no women, and now all of a sudden, there was a Nanny Smurf who was long lost. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense, so I, I checked really? out. Really? That that's was, what did it for That's what did it for me, that's why I stopped. And that is so interesting. Years old. <laughs> oh my god. You're a fan of uh, the Smurfs though? Yeah, yeah, I watched the cartoon uh, when I was a kid. It was really big in Brazil, actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So who's your favorite Smurf? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember the names, but uh, there was this guy who always uh, made inventions. Oh, that was Handy Smurf. Yeah, he created stuff and yeah. they never worked, right? Oh, wait. Or, or so did they work? I don't the, know. Um, there, was, there was Handy Smurf who used to make stuff. The guy with the, with the, the box that used to post the about box. Jokies. Yeah, the, the, the Joker, Joker Smurf. Joker's we have a question from the audience, yes. Yeah, I was wondering, was it in English in Brazil? No, no, in Portuguese. Oh, in Portuguese. they do? Oh, wow. So, um, so yeah. I, were, I just have one thing. Yeah. You said they're three apples tall? Yes, they're I'm, three apples high. That's the story of how does they, any, how tall does they are. Does any tailor use <laughs> apples to measure things? That was just <laughs> how, they were how tall are you? I'm, I'm 70 apples tall. <laughs> well, this is just for scale. It's like, three for, apples is pretty high. high. So I'm going to start high. using it's, apples it's for measurements all the time. You're going to see it. Mark's going to all right, so moving on. Wow. Moving on. From the That's what? a Lot of Nuts department, the new Bad Boy sequel, which is the fourth one for those of you keeping track, yeah. has taken the number one spot in the domestic box office, pulling in $56.5 million in ticket sales in its first week of release, beating out the new Garfield animated movie, which came in at a number two spot, making an additional $10 million in its third week of release. For those of you keeping track, Dune Part 2 is still the highest grossing film this year so far. With two hundred and eighty-two million dollars, followed by Godzilla X Kong with one hundred and ninety-six million dollars. Bad Boys comes in at number seventeen. Now I have to say this is this is petty of me, of Mark, petty Mark, because okay. I am a huge Chris Rock fan, okay. and I've never seen any of the Bad Boys. I really wanted this movie to fail, and it didn't. So you know, it's making Chris Rock. Because Will Smith smacked the, the, the tape Oh, out, I was like, like I'm Rock. sorry, but I don't think Chris Rock is in this. No, he's yeah. not, but like... I was just okay. to remember, it's Martin Lawrence, right? It's Chris, yes. it's Chris Rock. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Martin Lawrence and yes. Will Smith. And, but Will Smith. Right, right, and the fact that he assaulted him in the, oh. on the national television and the Oscars. So now you're not a fan on, of Will Smith. Right, I lost my respect for him. Even though I never saw the movie, I like Will Smith and I other things. You. But yeah. just being petty, I was like, you know, I really hope this movie doesn't make it because then it will show him that oh what he did was wrong, mm -hmm. as opposed to he smacked Chris Rock, uh -huh. he won the Oscar afterwards, okay. nothing really happened to him, and now he's in a, well, I'm this gonna, is his big I'm return gonna to movies. You, this is his big I like career. Martin Lawrence. You so, like Martin Lawrence. Just so, so Mar why make Martin Lawrence suffer because you don't like Will Smith? Honestly, I'm not the biggest, you know, Will Smith, whatever. Hey, if you want to cast me in something, I'll, I'll totally act with you, Will Smith. Mm -hmm. But um, no, Martin Lawrence. You're a Martin loved, Lawrence fan. Yeah, I've even been compared to him, which really? is like awesome. So did you do stand up? Just like my way of being, it's like a little wacky. Just the you're way definitely I am. An and it's why I don't stand man. up. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been compared to old black men. Oh, all right. I have. All right. Yes. So yes. So no. No. Don't punish Martin. Lawrence. All right. So we have Martin Lawrence yes. fan, non Will Smith fan. Mario, are you a fan of either one? Have you seen any of the uh, the Bad Boys? I think movies? I saw the first one. First one. I don't. I don't remember the, the movie actually. But I like Will Smith until the the slap. Right. Right. And then there was a hug. Yeah. You know, it, it yeah. sours the thing, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I don't know, I always saw him as a as a nice guy. Yeah. He always seemed to be a nice guy. And then I don't know. But at the same time, I don't know. 
But I will Chris say... Rock was kind of, you know, beyond the, the limit there, I guess. Yeah. 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 It is beyond the limit, but I will play devil's advocate, which I don't even really agree with. You know, maybe he's such a nice guy that maybe his wife or someone in Hollywood beat him down so much and he was reacting to all the abuse he had, you know, suffered and then he lashed out because everyone has a breaking point and there's a mm -hmm. lot of rumors about his wife being not so nice and driving him a little mm -hmm. crazy so maybe mm -hmm. if you have a wife who's addicted to porn and sleeping around on you and gives you no respect maybe you're gonna lash out and maybe it's better that you just slap someone rather than shooting up a school I, you know what that's a it could bad, be worse that's a bad, it could be worse speaking yeah. from someone who's yeah. just a little a little bit bothered by your right. by one idiot Right. So if I was bothered by 10 years, maybe I would slap someone at the Oscars or Grammys or whatever event I don't care about, you know? Okay. Yeah. So moving on. Yeah. From the, it's a five-year show for real this time department. None other than Amazon has announced that while season four is just starting to air, the show, uh, The Boys, will end after its fifth year. Wow. The showrunner, Eric Kripke, says, mm -hmm. I am without hyperbole. Literally the worst person in history at predicting how long their show should go. No one in their entire history of entertainment business has been more wrong than me, giving interview after interview on how I thought Supernatural should end after five years. So I would be crazy to speculate on how many seasons any show should go. I am not going to make the same mistake again, but yes, I do have an ending in mind. Now, as he mentioned, he was the creator of Supernatural, mm -hmm. which um, he used to say vehemently, that it was a five-year show. Mm -hmm. And if you watch Supernatural, you can see it had a five-year arc as to what was gonna happen. So what was interesting to note is that the show lasted 10 additional years right. than the five-year arc. And if, if, if you're a fan of the show, a lot of people kind of lost interest because they just basically kept on recirculating the same okay. idea over and over and over again as the years went on. And maybe they should have ended it early. But as a, as a consumer of TV shows, had that show had ended at the fifth season, it yeah. probably would have been one of the best shows ever oh. to be on television. Huh. Were you a Supernatural fan, Mario? No. No, not at all. No, no, I mean, not a fan, but I didn't dislike it. Okay. It's just, just, just a show that I didn't watch. All right, fair enough. Yeah. What about oh, you, yeah, I, I don't even know what it is, really. So it was a show that was on the, the WB and became the CW. Wow. Um, it had two brothers uh, that was chasing down uh, supernatural things. It was kind of like X-Files, but a little more action-packed, I, I guess you would say. And then was it, they, what years was it popular? Um, well, it was popular all the way up until, I think, the last year. Which but, year, though? I mean, like, 2010? Oh, what years? Um, Jesus. It was 15 years. It ended during the pandemic, so we're going to say That's 2000. That's why. Mm -hmm. Well... It's on CW and have cable, so maybe that's why. Oh, CW is a regular channel, channel 11. That's what I'm saying. I stopped oh. watching cable in like 2004. 2005. Okay. 2005. Yeah. But it's on, it's on now on, I think, TNT. I watch it like every night. They have reruns. You watch it, Supernatural it, every night? It's, well, not, yeah, but it, it's on. Stuff. You, you can't, wow. you know, it's on like the sports thing at TNT it's or TV. I watch 21 Jump Street almost every night. Yeah, I do too. That, that's, that's on one channel on my TV. Yes. I have to write to yeah. my TV. Well, same thing with the su yeah, really? Supernatural, <laughs> uh, Big Bang Theory. It's like they don't have anything else to show. Mm -hmm. Well, if you maybe you know. someone's controlling my TV from 21 Jump Street department. Because every time I turn my TV on, no matter what I do, it's 21 Jump Street. The original series or the movie? The original. Do you like the movie, the movie the on with, what's his, with yep, what's his name, you know, the dancer? So, and everybody loves him. Moving on. From the The Wheel Keeps on Turning department, none other than Pat Sajak has recorded his final. Wheel of Fortune episode this past April. Um, the show aired last uh, Friday, June 7th, making it a world record holder for 41 years as the longest game show with the same host. Uh, the show will continue with Pat as a consultant for three more years and is going to have Ryan Seacrest as the new host with Vanna White remaining as his co-host, extending her contract for at least two more years. Pat says, somewhere along the line, we became more than a popular show we became part of the popular culture. More importantly, we became part of people's lives, and that's been awfully gratifying. Not my life. Uh, Ryan says, no one can replace him. I just want to come in and continue to have fun with those contestants. I am truly humbled by stepping into the footsteps of legendary Pat Sajak. 
I can say, along with the rest of America, it has been a privilege and a pure joy to watch Pat and the game show host of Vanna White on our television screens for an unprecedented 40 years, making us smile every night and feel right at home with them. Uh, he has made me smile and such an impact on this whole country. He's been a companion and a best friend to a lot of people. I have so much respect and admiration for what he's been able to do. He's a total pro, no one smoother and seamless than Pat. Vanna White says, when I heard that Pat was retiring, I thought maybe I should retire too, but I'm not ready. We'll see towards the end of those years, of those two years, how I feel. Thank God, after all these years, I still love my job. I feel happy for him. I can't imagine doing the show without him after 41 years. I sum it up as reading a good book. It has to come to an end. This has been the best book I ever read. Now, you said you're not a Wheel of Fortune fan. Have you ever watched it? Yeah, as a kid, sure. As a kid. Yeah, I watched and the Gremlins. I mean, just. And that was it. All right. Yeah. What do I care? About? Wheel of Fortune, Mario? Was, was that big in the, the uh, Wheel? No, no, we don't have that. I no. mean, we have game shows and uh, similar games. Uh, but not exactly that one. So I also watched it as a kid, watch, you know, turn the channel every occasion yeah, when yeah. come on, but it was just like it was something that was just always there. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't like something I had to see. Yeah. Or something like I don't want to watch it. It was just kind of there where I guess if you have a show for yeah. 41 years. Unlike um, The Price is Right, right, which I was a fan of, and I more. used to more watch it more a little more religiously, especially when I had off from school. Right, right. It was 11 o'clock at the same time. Just get up and watch that show. You see Bob Barker, that was like, you know, one of his things, and Bob retired, and Drew Carey made his own. And I'll still occasionally watch The Price is Right, right. over Wheel of Fortune. And Wheel of Fortune's right. been 730 forever. Well, as you uh, said, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune's kind of like it's just there, you don't yeah. pay attention, which, no shade, but is this true? I mean, Ryan Seacrest is kind of just there. Does anyone really do yeah. that? Like, I gotta see Ryan Seacrest That's tonight. Oh my thing, god! Like, for, no, for, it was great. For putting Ryan, like out of all people, Makes like sense, I though. think, I think personally um, that they should have had an unknown. An unknown. Yeah, because oh. that way, it's not about the host; it's about the oh, show. Okay. And since the show had one host for forty-one years. You bring in a new guy oh, who, who okay. just goes to just fill oh. into the slot as opposed to it's Ryan Seacrest. Right. Because Ryan Seacrest took over for uh, Dick Clark for the New Year's okay. uh, Eve. Right. And Ryan Seacrest was like a temporary uh, 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 host for um, Regis and Kelly for a while. Like I always see Ryan Seacrest. I think Seacrest he fits right in because those are all things that I don't care about. Kind so of now he's like the official substitute. <laughs> yes, I guess so. Yeah. Question from the audience. That's no, right. he wasn't. Ryan, Ryan Seacrest wasn't a temporary. Kelly, he was actually on the he show was there for, for, for a, while, a couple right? of years, but I guess right. he got bored and he moved on, you know, and mm. and that's why. And, and you say you don't like Wheel of Fortune, but now they have all well, these. Not that I don't like they it. have all these celebrities on. That's yeah. why I watch it now. Right. It's okay. cool. I was actually watched it a couple of days ago. All these celebrities, and same thing with Jeopardy and stuff. One question for the audience: <laughs> Did the celebrities make you tune in? You're like, oh, it's a celebrity, and you're more likely to tune in. Yeah, that okay. that helps, and I do like Ryan Seacrest, and do. he does have a big following. I bet my he first does. Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, he does. Years I, old. I, I like him. Look at that. I actually I like him more. better than Kelly's husband now. And if you watch Kelly, Mark and, and no, Mark, I don't yeah, any of this. yeah, because I work from home, so you know, okay. I had need to entertain myself. You know, so I'm learning. Moving on. From the, Thank but you. will it ever come out department? None other than Rob Liefeld has announced that he will write and then publish his memoir titled Rob's Observation, which okay. also happens to be the name of his podcast through Ben Bella Books. Rob says, I have a lifelong affair with comic books. They have been my passion since I was seven years old. I have been fortunate to break into the business as a teenager in the 80s, and I've had five decades of tremendous change, quite a bit of upheaval and a fair amount of rebellion and betrayal some of which I started. It's been quite a ride, and I'm eager to share this incredible ride with everyone. Watching my creations become roles portrayed by Ryan Reynolds, Josh Brolin, Zazie Beetz, Minka Kelly, and many more on the way. It's a crazy culmination of my comic book dreams as a kid. Over the course of my career, comic books have become a rich minefield that drives pop culture. Uh, the publisher says, Ben Bella is thrilled to partner with the legendary comic artist Rob Liefeld on the release of his memoir. Rob offers a glimpse into the hurdles and triumphs of his 38 career and the origin stories of many beloved characters. And what's next for the creator of Deadpool and Cable? We're excited that he'll help share his story with fans who love comic books and much more he does. The book is scheduled to come out next year. Now what's interesting about Rob is that Rob has said many times that he's going to be making stuff and it never comes out, oh. it's super delayed. Oh. Uh, so those of you who don't know, uh, Rob was one of the co-founders of Image Comics, 
which really changed the entire dynamic of the comic book feel. So, for example, if you think of back in the old days, a senior correspondent tells us something is not here, but we had three channels. ABC, CBS, NBC, that was it. <laughs> and then Fox came along, and that was like the upstart network. Right. And then Fox became this huge, big thing, and then and everybody was like, oh, we can do that too. Mm -hmm. And now that's why we have so many different channels, so many right. streaming services, so many cables, and that. It was right. basically because Fox came in and did something that no one thought could do, which was break the monopoly of the big three companies. So awesome. in the comic book world, you had the two big companies, mm -hmm. Marvel and DC, and the hottest artists at the time all left Marvel and DC to go make their own company. Oh. And then they're like, well, if they can do it, we can do it too. And a whole bunch oh. of independent creators started coming out the woodwork. Oh. And Rob was like the youngest one. He was the quote unquote hip one. Oh. He actually had his own jeans commercial back in the day for oh. Levi's jeans. Okay. And he was always making announcements back in the day that uh -huh. this thing was gonna be a movie, this is gonna this, oh. this is gonna be this book, this is gonna be that book. And it never happened. A lot of stuff never happened. Let's say some stuff actually did come out. Mm -hmm. Some books he made, one of, and the next one came like six, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the line. So it was just one of those things. So now he's going to write a memoir. I'm like, is he really going to write a memoir? Uh, like, is this really going to happen? I don't know. I think so. so. And Brazil was Rob a big uh, really name? Mean, yeah, really? yeah. It's like a love and hate relationship. I don't know if it's the same here in the U.S., but uh, Rob's considered like not a good artist. Oh. You know, like technically speaking, he's not a good artist. He's oh. he's still not a good artist. <laughs> he's extremely stylized. Yes, yes. I mean, he does have a style. Huh. It's very unique. You know, it's him. Okay. And uh, when they they created Image, uh, he became like the CEO of his own stu studio. So uh, he helped a lot of new artists uh, to break into comics. So that's really cool. Uh, and he's, he was always a, a wild card, you know, like uh, creating projects and, and uh, this is gonna be a movie, this is gonna be a cartoon and nothing ever happens. Right. But uh, it is divisive. I mean, I have a couple of friends that who really like him hmm. because of the, the uniqueness of his style, mm -hmm. but most people really don't think he's just, uh, he's, he's uh, a great artist or a great, uh, Entrepreneur or right. a great creator, right. let's say, you know. Wow. Uh, myself, uh, I just admire the, the, how can I put this? Uh, we have a word in, in Portuguese, may I say that? Yeah. Pachorra. Okay. I love saying this, pachorra. It's like the nerve of this guy, you know. <laughs> oh, the cojones, the balls. Yeah, because he just <laughs> does stuff, he's still there, you know. Right. He's, I mean, he he's survived. Not, he survived. <laughs> And he's not a good artist, and yeah. he knows how to surf the wave, you know, if you know what, if you know what I mean. Uh, so he, he mentioned in, in this quote, Mark read, uh, I had my characters played by Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, one character <laughs> who, like, the version of Deadpool we know now is not the Deadpool he created. Right. He's such a different character now. Yes. You know, changed right. over the years. So he's like taking credit, I guess, for something he kind of created. But that's yeah. also marketing, you know? Right. So he's very smart in the in Savvy this, marketing. Yeah. He's by a marketing machine like, you know, the Barnum and Bailey circus. And it, uh, my question, what I wonder is if he made all these announcements kind of knowing that these things might not happen or like I don't even care if it's going to happen because for me I made a rule at least a couple of years ago with my films and everything if it's not certain I usually don't even say something until it's done like we just booked you know a school for money a down payment for them for a film so that's secure so I can talk about it and mm -hmm. cast people but until that was that payment was down I'm not going to talk about it yeah. and I'm not even going to tell you something's going to happen I have many things in production until it's it's done because yeah. your credibility just goes out the window uh, I think that like thinking about myself when I was a teenager and I was reading Rob's comics uh, I understand the hype mm -hmm. and I, I, I understand uh, how hype he is about his own stuff Mm -hmm. So I don't think that he doesn't care if it happens or not. Mm -hmm. I just think that he wants it to happen. And he's talking about it because he's like full of energy. And this is, this is cool, this is cool. And then when it comes to the time to actually write and draw mm -hmm. and edit and produce, 
that's a whole other game, you know. You know? So I yeah. also learned from a, a, a colleague of mine. Uh, we we so we worked on this uh, adaptation of a very famous Brazilian book, uh, and he he's not like a comic book writer. Mm -hmm. He's a writer. Mm -hmm. He wrote for movies, for theater, and books and stuff. So this was his one and only comic he did. Okay. And he's an editor too. So I learned so much from him because he, he's not from the, the gang, yeah. you know, yeah. he's, he's not uh, from comics. Mm -hmm. And he uh, kind of teaches me something very similar to what you, you just said. Uh, don't talk about stuff you're not sure it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You know, let's keep it to ourselves because people will, will, make ex will create expectation for that. And then you're promising things that yeah. are not gonna be delivered or yeah. are gonna be late or are not gonna be as good as you think it was supposed to be so I learned that from him and I try to hold my my hype yeah you know. and your credibility I think grows when you do that mm -hmm. yeah people people eventually can see through the lines I mean you will get maybe you could get you know more followers or likes on social media or whatever if you say something and then you know a lot of people won't even follow up a year later mm -hmm. so you could say oh I'm gonna be in a Marvel movie and then all these people will call me oh my god Jen let's be friends again and, and what happened but I could do that, but then a year later, what if it doesn't happen? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that's what happened to him. Because look at you, how you're talking about him. He's lost your respect. Kind of, yeah. yeah and we're still talking yeah. about him. Yeah. And he's still making exactly things. That's, that's but the thing. he's popular, yeah. but not respected. Uh -huh. So, what do you want to be in life? Yeah. You want to be popular yeah. or be respected? Yeah. There, there, there are some whom I disagree, and they still are in that Rob Liefeld camp. But uh -huh. a lot of oh, yeah. Yeah. professionals and a lot of other people are like they have that love hate relationship. Yeah. And they're they're impressed by what he has done. Yeah. What he keeps on, he still keeps on surviving. He still keeps on pushing through. Mm -hmm. But then there's the other half that he doesn't deliver. Right. So if but he's delivered a lot. He has delivered so a lot. So I would just say, you know, well, he's the percentage a lot. of what he says, what actually comes out, is not. Even 50-50, it's like okay. 70 per promises, Whoa. 20% actual delivery. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's one of those wow. Things. My God. Okay. So moving on to the last bit of news. From the uh, editor intern clip here department, none other than Mike Tyson has announced a new date for his fight against Jake Paul, which would now be November on the 15th. Mike says, unfortunately, due to my ulcer flare-up, I have been advised by my doctor to lighten my training for a few weeks to rest and recover. My body's in better overall shape than it has been since the 1990s, and I will be back in my full training schedule soon. Jake Paul, you just may have brought you some time, but in the end, you will still be knocked out and outboxed for good. I appreciate everyone's patience and can't wait to deliver an unforgettable performance later this year. Mm -hmm. However, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, who will oversee the fight, said, TDLR rules state, that licensing does not automatically authorize an individual to participate in an event if their health or safety could be compromised. The department will stay informed about the health of the combatants and will obtain more information if needed to protect their health and safety. In addition to the pre-licensing medical screening, TDLR's ringside physicians also conduct pre-fight physicals before the event. Uh, for those of you who don't know or don't care for that matter, uh, the upcoming fight between Mike Tyson and YouTuber Jake Paul was upgraded from an exhibition match to an officially sanctioned fight mm -hmm. and is now scheduled for eight two-minute rounds at heavyweight level. Uh, knockouts will be allowed in the fight mm. and the fighters will wear 14-ounce gloves with no headgear. Oh. Uh, Mike Tyson's last non-exhibition fight was in 2005 right. and Jake is currently nine wins and one loss in his career. Oh. Mike Tyson will be 58 and Jake will be 27 years old. Uh, the fight was originally sent for July 27, and due to a medical situation, the fight was postponed. Right. And it's heavily rumored at the time of this recording, which is uh, June the 12th, um, that Jake will fight someone else on the 27th and then come back to fight Mike in November. Okay. Because this was going to be a big Netflix deal that they were going to be a live streaming, just like oh. when they had the Chris Rock, a live streaming event. They're trying to make more live streaming on Netflix so people have to buy in and get the okay. service. It was going to be a live fight on Netflix, the smart. first one ever. Yeah, it's fine. So, but now the fight's not going to happen, so he invested that. in that. So that. now it's going to have, he's going to fight somebody else. Yeah. And then November, he's going to fight Tyson, probably. Yeah. So I'm thinking it could have been the worst, this is the worst situation for Netflix, for them to have this idea that it was going to be this big fight. And now it's going to be 
they go find some other guy who we don't even know who this guy is. I think it could work out well. Really? How, yeah. how, do, you, how do you figure? Because people like me, so I get Mike Tyson updates from one of my friends. Shout out, Eric. I and get, you actually met Mike Tyson. I, I, I did, I did. But um, my friend texts me updates, so as soon as uh, he was sick on the plane, I get a text come in while I'm cooking in my kitchen, I get the update, and I was like, I bet you the flight's canceled. And my friend goes, no, it's not. I'm like, okay, whatever. But anyway, the point is, if you prolong the date, you can get more subscribers on Netflix because people like me say, oh, in November, I'm not going to cancel my Netflix now because I got to hang on till November for the fight. So just keep on. It's kind of like a relationship. You know, there's like certain women and men, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. So you keep on holding on for days or weeks or years thinking, but it never happened. I think it will happen, but I think this would be brilliant publicity if I was a liar and owned Netflix. I would totally make this happen. Do you think Tyson's gonna win? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I don't know. What about you, Mario? You a Tyson fan? You a boxing fan? Not really. Uh, I like the Rocky movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. and, and Creed. Creed is awesome. Yes, Creed was really good. <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't really care uh, about boxing. But I care less about celebrities fighting for publicity. Yeah. And, uh, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I care about Mike Tyson. I don't care about the Paul guy. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care. Yeah. Question for the audience. Well, yes. basically, uh, what, what you just said, that my brother and his friends were into boxing, but they had no interest in this because it's, it's a show. It's an exhibition. It's right. like wrestling. Yeah. Um, wrestlers have done that before yeah. with boxers. Yeah. Uh, uh, I forget the Japanese wrestler. But now it's going to be an actual right. fight, though. Not it's, not it's, still, it's still an exhibit. It's really, from what yeah, I understand, it's going to be an the exhibition. The wins and losses yeah. are going to count, so it counts as an actual fight. At least that's what the, that was the last bit of news before the Ulcer. So I don't know what's going mm -hmm. to change, mm -hmm. but at the time, it was going to be an actual sanctioned fight yeah. with the records counting. It was going to be a real fight without the headgear. It was going to be a real fight. But so they were going to use like 14-ounce gloves. 14-ounce gloves. You know what that's like? Doing. It's like hitting somebody with a pillow, which right. is kind of which kind of a joke. So it's, it's, still, <laughs> it's not like MMA right. where these guys yeah. really kill each other, which I like that because yeah. they really hurt. You <laughs> right. know, it's a real fight, not a wrestler and a you know right. boxer. Yeah. It's 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 a. Uh, it's, it's wrestling. Oh, well, it's like yeah. an exhibition. I, yeah, well, it's entertainment. So the only thing he said, he said he was in better shape than he when he was in the nineties or his twenties. <clears throat> right back in the day, he's better shape. He's now. in better shape as a fifty-year-old. Yeah. I don't know because I'm I'm turning forty and I feel like I was in better shape in my twenties and I'm only forty. So how is a fifty-eight-year-old in better? I don't know, man. I guess I we'll know. have to wait and see. I don't know, yeah. fifty-eight and twenty-seven. Like I don't well, know. Stallone was was ripped. When he mm -hmm. did Rocky Six, right? Rocky Balboa. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe him. He's still uh, looking good, I guess. Right. You know, like uh, keeping up. But I mean, the body changed. I'm also turning forty this year, oh. and Happy I know. Happy birthday! Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of scary, you know. But at the same time, your body changes. I, I mean, he yeah. can't have the same kind of training he had twenty years ago. He's a different whole person, you know. Uh, He's got a nose, sir? Is, is it correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Supposedly. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. yeah uh, maybe he feels good, but I, I don't know if his body is as good for boxing as it oh, would be 30 years ago. You have wear and tear yeah. 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 Or that you don't have in your 20s. I don't know. And also the other guy seems to be like in his prime, so. Right. At 27. Yeah. I was a maniac at 25. 27, <laughs> I fell off because I was such a maniac. Alright, fair enough. We gotta take a break. We gotta take a break. Oh, sorry. Right back. Mark cutting off. It came from the radio. Mark cut off the audience. Hey, everybody, this is Todd McFarland of the Record Setting Spawn Comics Series. And if you're looking for any kind of cool conversation about creators, about entertainment, about all that stuff, you go to It Came From the Radio. You listen to the right spot. Yeah, we talked about I was like, I didn't know what this was going to be about. This is the first time we've known for Axel. It's just too bad there's nobody here. No, yeah, I talked to the Metal Gear series. And you're listening to It Came From the Radio. Stick around. Hey, I'm 
Mike Kingston, the writer and creator of Headlock. And I am WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler. And guess what you're listening to? You're listening to it came from the radio. But you wanted to, you know, hug and kiss your fans. Or... Hi, this is Amy Jo Johnson, yeah, writer and actor from the Space Force. I don't know. You're listening to Adam Kingston Radio. But you know, two minutes and then we're going to go on. Meet Grimlock having fun on It Came from the Radio. Meet Greg Berger also. Now, back to our show. Yes, we're back already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is, pick up the this is your host, Mark Torres. Okay. here in the East right. Coast Public Library for our 81st live show. All right. I am here with old man Jenny Felding. Hey. I am here with our special guest, Mariel Cal. Hey. And we're going to be talking with Mariel right now. Yeah. So, Mariel, I actually uh, saw you at the Tropicon, mm -hmm. and you had a little sign, Brazilian comic first time in... New York, right? In the US, yeah. Wow. So, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit about that journey from becoming a Brazilian comic artist to just a regular comic artist, as I'm going to call you from now on? Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I've, I've been living in Long Island for a year and a half now. Okay. Yeah, going on two, two years, yeah. Uh, so, I've been making comics since I was a kid. I love comics, it's my favorite medium. Uh, I just love telling stories, and I started started working. Uh, I mean, drawing. I started drawing when I was two or three years old. Never wow. stopped. Wow. And yeah, same. I mean, it's it brought me here, you know. Wow. And uh, back in Brazil, I have a twenty year career. I started publishing and making my stuff professionally in 2004, 20, 2004, Yeah, so. I'm here in the U.S. because of my wife, actually. Uh, my wife, Monica, shout out, love you so much. Aww. Today awesome. is actually Brazilian uh, Valentine's Day. What? So, really? Yeah. Love you, Monica. Aww. Yeah. June 12th. Sorry? June 12th. June 12th. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm trying to learn. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> yours in, is in February. Yeah. 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 So depressing. <laughs> yeah, this cold. is it's like fun. Yeah, 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 this is like amor, the fire. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's winter in Brazil. It's, it's coming to to the colder, you know, okay. weather. Hmm. Uh, it's it's never as cold in Brazil as as it is here. Okay. I, I was like, wow, amazed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So okay, back to comics. <laughs> so uh, we moved here because she um, she is in a program which is a partnership between Stony Brook University okay. and the Consulate of Brazil in oh. New York. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and she's teaching Portuguese yeah. uh, in Stony Brook. It, it's like a program, uh, like a two to four years uh, program, and, and people go from Brazil to many other countries to teach Portuguese and Brazilian literature or Brazilian culture and, and stuff, yeah, stuff like that. Super cool. It's, it's amazing, it's really cool. And the news that that you were uh, actually she was uh, invited to come uh, it was right after the the pandemic mm -hmm. and we had to make like this big life decision to uh, stay in brazil mm -hmm. and keep doing what we were doing we were doing fine uh, or take this big leap and like face the unknown yeah you know uh, so here we are and it's been a, a, an interesting, interesting journey, uh, and uh, she's happy at SBU, and I'm happy for her. But the change was weird for me because I mean, we both made our professional careers in Brazil during our time there, mm -hmm. and like I said, I started uh, my professional life in, in 2004. So when I had to decide, okay, I'm leaving everything behind. I have people who like my work, I have my friends, my colleagues, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I never like to talk about my, my uh, accomplishments, my accolades, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm bragging. Well, that's but what you're here to do, so yeah, but this <laughs> is a safe space for that. Okay, let's brag. Yeah, this yeah. is your time to brag. So I, I published dozens of books. I've Great. Been to, most of our uh, comic book shows and, and comic cons, uh, I've won awards. I've made great partnerships with writers and colorists. And Understandable. It was amazing. It was uh, such a great experience. So I was kind of afraid of, of making this, this big 
change in our lives. Uh, because here, I am nobody. Right. I wasn't a superstar in Brazil, of course, but I was pretty solid. Yeah. People knew me. I right. was like, uh, wow. I mean, climbing, climbing up the, 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 the stairs. And here, I, I'm unknown. Right. Uh, so far. So far, yeah. Uh, and things are, are weird because, you know, it's different when you are growing mm -hmm. and you know that you are starting low because you because that's where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, your art, your writing, your editing, your presence, your personal marketing uh, uh, abilities, they are compatible to the place uh, you are in your life. Yeah. So, okay, uh, I'm 20 years old, I'm starting to make independent comics, I don't know how to draw very well, I, I, I'm doing my best. And now I am almost 40, right? and I have all this baggage, you know. What accomplishments. Yeah, and what am I going to do with all, with all that yeah. here, where yeah. nobody knows me? Uh, and that's different, different from being like, uh, like an artist in Brazil who is very successful, like some of my friends and colleagues, mm -hmm. and they are already, already publishing internationally. Okay. It's different, like, oh, okay, like, let's say, um, Marcelo Quintanilha is a great Brazilian uh, comic book uh, uh, author. He lives in Spain. Okay. He's been living there for uh, many years, I guess. So if he decides to move, you know, like when he moved to, S to Spain, uh, or if he wants to move here, he's already a big deal. Gotcha. So I know, he's just moving countries, but he already has the following, he already has the, the, the foundation yeah. for everything. Uh, and I did have the foundation, like a smaller one, but in Brazil yeah. only. So I saw this as an opportunity to meet new people and show my work to more, uh, like a broader audience. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I trust my work, I have faith in my work. Uh, that's why I'm publishing in English now. Okay, uh, Great. I've got some books yes. here. Uh, I'm going to comic book shows, I'm meeting right. interesting people right. all around, right. you know. And it's been a, a, a great journey, but I, I still feel like I, I'm i not here and I'm not there. You know, I'm kind of right. in between, yeah. trying to find my footing. And at the same time, uh, Monica's program, uh, it would end in August, in August. and then okay. we extended. Uh, so uh, she actually signed the contract today. Uh, we're staying until 2026. 2026. But okay. then we're going back. Two years, okay. And so uh, I, I still have to understand uh, how to better use my time here mm -hmm. because I know I'm going away. Mm -hmm. And how not to disappear from Brazil yeah. because I'm going back. Yeah. So it's. I, I got know. ideas. Yeah. I, I mean. Social media, more mm -hmm. English, like what you're here, what I would do because I, I checked his YouTube and I, mm -hmm. I don't, I speak English. I. I used to speak some Spanish. Anyway, I couldn't really find anything in English. So mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of dropped off because I can't follow. So yeah. you could use these next two years to make a whole bunch of English speaking content mm -hmm. and people all over the world speak English. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that'll that I think that's going to open you up to big time because I saw the quality of work and I'm like, I could tell by thumbnails and the graphics that you're great. So that's obviously and go on and do Facebook Live and go on different shows and do different events all in English. And then by the time you get back to Brazil, people speak English in Brazil yeah, too. Also, sure. You'll have both and now you'll be mm -hmm. ooh, yeah. bye such lingua comic book all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is uh, great. my my the the word I I chose mm -hmm. is existing. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I existed in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't even questioning that. You know, mm -hmm. like I know my place. I know my fan base, uh, even if it's not like massive. But yeah. uh, my crews there, my guys are there, my, yes. my people. You know, yeah. Yeah. and I I wanted to make the same thing happen here. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not like desperate. You know, like uh, right. I would love to have my stuff published here. Because uh, I, I do have some work that I love very much, uh, but I've been publishing independently, like self-publishing in Brazil, mm -hmm. for twenty years too. So like self-publishing is not a, not new for me. Right. Like yeah. that's what I do. Uh, but I, I think I still have the 
that idea that maybe if a company, like a publishing company, uh, saw my work, enjoyed it, thought, well, we can work with this, right. and publish uh, my stuff here, I think it would be good because the books are ready, you know, it's right. done, it's published. Right. It's not like, uh, I'm, it's not, I'm not like uh, uh, <coughs> pitching an right. idea. You're not a yeah, it's just, just yeah, translated. Exactly. It's just translating. I mean, it sounds like you have enough foundation to super take off with the English. You know, here's an idea. Have you ever thought of making reels, like on social media? You could take pictures and you can make different reels that get more viral. That's another idea in addition. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not the best person with social media. I can show you. Uh, I, nice. I exist also. Uh, and I do have the YouTube channel. I, I, I can't make like a video a, a week like I wanted yeah, to or like yeah. I used to because well life you know uh, but yeah I, I know I know there are things that I can do a lot to show more my work or show myself more and exist more uh, but it, it's kind of weird because like uh, when Monica uh, got the news that it was gonna work out and she was uh, uh, like being uh, hired and stuff it was, uh, I guess, February 2022. Okay. And the pandemic has was like ending, quotes, sort you know, yeah. sort of. Yeah. But we had the, the, the shots and, and stuff. Yeah. Well, we were doing better. So we were finally going to start living again. You know, like, uh, and for me, going to comic book shows is very important. Mm -hmm. because that's where I sell my stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, and meet new readers, of course. Mm -hmm. And then we went through a, a, like two or three months of complete chaos, yeah. trying to figure out what are we, are we gonna do with our lives? Yeah. Because we have our place, we have our car, we were talking about having kids, and oh you know. And then we, and then we go to the states, and we have nothing, and, and right. it's it's weird. Yeah. Very uh, great. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah, for that, because sometimes yeah. you forget how brave it is to just yeah. leave everything I behind. Yeah. I didn't do Brazil, but I've done different states twice. Yeah. Totally I mean, start. Mm -hmm. And it took like six to eight years to, to really know people, like really be mm -hmm. connected. Like I'd say yeah. year six, it's like I know everyone, but before year five or six, it's like... Mm -hmm. And you have to keep working it, you know, yeah. like to... to uh, mm -hmm. It's not like six years waiting inside your room, it's six years working yes. and doing stuff and going to meet people. Yes. That's really important. So uh, I stayed in Brazil. Monica came here in August and then I stayed until December. Uh, and then, well, now we're here. So uh, we, we didn't know if we were gonna stay more than two years. So it was always like this temporary feeling, you know, like, uh, I don't know if I want to invest a lot of energy, money, and time uh, in the US, yeah. career-wise, right. mm -hmm. or if I just like take it as, 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 as like a sabbatical, you know, like I'm just gonna work on my stuff and right. when I go back, I go back. I don't know, life happens. Yes, it does. I, I don't know, I think this could work to your advantage. You're gonna learn so many things. Mm -hmm. yeah, Two sure. years, it, it'll fly by in the grand scheme of things and then you'll go home yeah. and you'll have all this knowledge that you can apply. So question, mm -hmm. well, what's your favorite piece of work and why? Okay. Um, I've done so many stories uh, and it's complicated, but I have a lot of favorites for different reasons. But if I have to put like one work, yeah. uh, it's called therapy. Uh, it's not available in English. I'm okay. really sorry for that. It will be though. It, it, it will be. It will yeah. be. Give me some time. Yeah. It will be. Uh, so therapy started as a web comic okay. in 2011. Okay. Uh, and then it's a it's a, a story about this 20 something year old guy. Uh, no, nobody has a name actually. You know, the the main characters they don't have a name. It's like oh. the kid and the therapist. Oh. Yeah, the kid and the and the, and the screen. Huh. So. Basically, we, we have this this 20 something guy. He goes to college, he has a family, he has a girlfriend, he, he works, but he's sad. I, I mean, nothing nothing uh, elevates him. Mm -hmm. he, he, he feels disconnected, he feels sad. 
and the only thing that makes sense for him is blues. So he loves blues music. Oh. Yeah, like old blues music, like Robert Johnson and uh, okay. Muddy Waters. Um, and that 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 that's his calling. But he's like studying uh, economical sciences and working at, a, at an office, you know. So each chapter of this web comic is a session, uh, a therapy session, and each of them uh, is related related to something in his life. So he's either talking about his family or his college or the uh, the new girl he met in college mm -hmm. or the the homeless guy he meets in the street and talks and the homeless guy ends up being like this the ghost of Robert Johnson in a way wow. yeah uh, <laughs> and I really love this 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 work this comic because it gave me so much freedom uh, like artistic freedom mm -hmm. because every time we needed uh, like this emotional moment like he's really angry. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just draw an angry guy. I would draw an angry guy like with scribbles and loose lines and the colors are all melting away mm -hmm. from him. Right. I wanted to show him like visually yeah. almost losing control. So he's like vibrating. Right. And then he has a nightmare and then I painted the nightmare in mm. black paper mm. with white paint. Mm, cool. It's like the opposite of how we usually usually right, draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, negative. And then he has this whole meta metaphor of uh, himself as a pawn in a chess game. So he's like in a giant uh, chessboard mm -hmm. with giant pieces made of stone. And mm -hmm. then I, I use like Mike Mignola as a reference to design the the, the pieces. So the king, the the, the tower, etc. That sounds dark. Yeah. And it was so amazing because we we went from. Uh, when I say we, I mean me. Mm -hmm. Rob Gordon uh, is the the writer, mm -hmm. one of the writers, and Marina Cursis, the other writer. Uh, Rob is a writer, like a proper writer, never done comics before, and Marina is a psychologist. Okay, cool. So uh, we were talking about mental health and yeah. the process of therapy with a therapist yeah. in the team, um, yeah. and I co-wrote and did all the, the artwork. Um, we published one page a week, so it felt like therapy. Right. Because oh. you have one page a week, right. so you had to you had time to process uh -huh. and, and digest That's everything. Cool. And it was like experimental in, in art, and it was really 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 cool. We did two books, uh, crowdfunded, okay, very successfully uh, crowdfunded. Crowdfunded. We were uh, nominated for awards, and we won best web comic of the year twice. Yeah. We were nominated Ruby. all the years Ruby. that they published. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what happened? Uh, there was this guy who was studying uh, like movie making, yeah. and he directed like a, a really short video, indie short video for his uh, directing uh, yeah. class, mm -hmm. you know, uh, based on the comic. Yeah. So it was really amazing. So this is my favorite because it took a long time to, to finish. We were publishing for eight years. Wow, that's yeah. deep. That's not shallow. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, and we had such a great following. A lot of people really loved the the work. And generally, my work, my my comics uh, and therapy is part of that. Mm -hmm. Is very uh, connected to emotion, to relationships, to a, a melancholic. Uh, feeling like it's very dramatic it's very sad actually some yeah. people uh, actually make <laughs> kind of make fun of me if some friends they make fun of me uh, they call me emo cow right because they say that's my funny. comics are emo uh, <laughs> that's but that's it I, I like sad stories I but like that the beauty stand out. I, I like the beauty of sadness you know? yeah like the beauty yeah. of not huh. achieving what you want I've been there yeah yeah and that scribble picture was like me last year Mark knows so it, it makes you grow, you know, it makes you, you uh, yes, stronger. Yes, so I like true. having these kind of stories. Um, I have, I've had many people over the years come to me and tell how much my comics were important for right. them. I bet. Uh, especially this one therapy, there's a, a, a dear friend of mine uh, who's also a comic book artist, Chris Aiko, Chris, uh, 
shout out. And she told me that she uh, she started doing therapy because of my comment, and that was really yeah. important for her. Wow. So I mean. I bet there's a lot of stories like that yeah, that you don't yeah. know because they say they used to say for every letter there's like 500 people that think mm -hmm. the same thing and who knows now so for everyone that speaks up there might be thousands of people yeah. or dozens and that I'm really happy for that that my my work being the one that is about therapy mm -hmm. or the other ones that are about relationships mm -hmm. and in life itself but uh, I'm really uh, grateful that my work can reach people uh, and I feel honored that some people uh, found solace or found like a, a warm hug in my yeah, work. You you're know? doing good deeds. Yeah, connection. You're it's doing really uh, what some people consider God's work, according amen. to many people. Amen. Depends on your belief. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah, really. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's important, you know. Uh, I started doing this kind of stories uh, because, backing up a little bit, like, flashback. I wanted to be Rob Life. You know, I wanted Life. to be Jim Lee. I wanted to be Todd McFarlane. I wanted to be no, no. Uh, a superhero you're better, you're better. Uh, artist, you know, because in Brazil we yeah. have comics and what's always been very, very strong in Brazil and kind of like solid hmm. kids comics, okay. you know, funny kids comics. Uh, okay. I knew I didn't want to do that. No. And then I fell in love with superheroes. And in Brazil, we read a lot of superheroes, American superheroes and Japanese manga too. Mm -hmm. So my dream was drawing Spider-Man or X-Men or Daredevil. Marvel is fun, I, I, I still would love to do that. Okay. But then uh, when I got like, when I, uh, I got into college, I studied art in college and that opened uh, like a new horizon for me. Know, like understanding art and, and uh, the, the poetry, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the meaning. Mm -hmm. It was a whole new world, but I was still reading superheroes. Mm -hmm. And then I started finding uh, stories that were not about superheroes, they were about people. Right, right. Um, and then, like, I, I, I came to the conclu conclusion uh, it was never about Spider Man battling Dr. Octopus. It was about Peter Parker being a loser, you know, having trouble, having problems, right. and, and being a superhero too. Right, right. It was about the X Men being outcasts. It was, a, it was about Daredevil being uh, overcome by guilt because he's Catholic and, and he's a lawyer, but he's also a demon and he's blind. Uh, all, all the problems, the real, the real problems, were interesting to me. And then I started finding like Will Eisner, Craig Thompson. Uh, my Brazilian friends who were making like uh, slices of life comics, mm -hmm. and then when I saw that, I said, "Wow, you can! So you can make comics about real people going through real stuff." Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going through now. So I started making comics about my life. And it's more relatable for people like yeah. me. I I want to relate. Well, and so why do what everyone else does? It's already there. Yeah. So Who cares? For more about your life, because we're almost out of time. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Where can people find I talk more much, about man. you? No, you're I'm fine. interested. I was very interested. Yeah. Where can people find out more about you? Websites, social media, all that okay. stuff. Okay, let's do. Uh, I'm Mario Cow everywhere. So you can find me on uh, Instagram, on Twitter. I refuse to call it X. I'm so sorry. Yeah, same. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on, on Facebook. Uh, my website is mariocow.com.br. Remember Brazil.br. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an English section there. You can read my bio. You can read about my books and mm -hmm. see my portfolio. I'm on Art Station. I'm on Cara. I don't even know why, but I'm on Cara. Uh, you can find me. I'm easy to find. And it's Cow C A U. Mario uh, yeah. Cow C A U. Right, not C O W C A U. Just in case for yeah. the listeners. Mm -hmm. So you were nice enough to give out a uh, original piece of artwork yeah. for our raffle. We have this Spider-Man original art here. Who's gonna win it? Who's, Who's gonna, gonna win, win it? it? Oh, <laughs> the mystery! Yeah. The mystery! Whoa. Okay, yeah, one. Yeah, one. So you get one. So you pull out one. Yeah, pick out one. Pick one. Okay. Pick one. Yeah, pick one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should I say the number? Oh, yeah. he's standing say the number, number. Right? Number. No, say the number. Say the number. The number is 37, 66, 89. 
Yes, yes, yes. 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 Everybody's always a winner at the Snow Public Library. There you go, my friend. There you go. So so we're yeah. uh, almost out of time right now, so I just want to have you have any final thoughts before we uh, sign off? Guys, uh, comics are amazing. It's the best language, the best medium, the best way of telling and reading stories. Uh, what I always say to people is, no matter what you like in terms of Themes or, or kind of characters or narratives, you will find that in comics. Anything. If you like like zombie ballerinas, right. there's a comic yes. about that. Yeah, you know, you yeah. can find it. Uh, read more comics. Comics are amazing. There's a lot of cool stories there, and uh, and that's it, I guess. And a picture says a thousand words. A picture yeah. eight in novels. Oh, read read Brazilian comics. So that about does it for this week on I uh, came from the radio in front of our live studio audience. Next month on uh, July the 10th for a Archie comic book writer and artist, uh, Francis Bonet. He'll be here at uh, www.eastmetal.info. And we will see you uh, next time. Woohoo! Right. Yes, yes. All right, all right, thank you. Thanks, guys. You've been listening yeah. to It Came From the Jeff Radio Lucas, with Mark Jeff, Torres. Jen, Jen, the Jen views of the show's Jen. hosts and guests do not necessarily movie. reflect that so of you the management, the owners, or staff of this station. We now return you to your beautiful. earthly scheduled oh, broadcast. Uh, I don't think you heard me talking about this book. So. Uh, this one is actually... Where's your crazy glasses?